Hi, this is Paul Solt from iPhone Dev TV. We're continuing the game menus tutorial. We're now going to create our pause screen um, so that when we actually press the pause button rather than making the other view disappear, we'll see some pause stuff and we'll have a little bit of an overlay. And it's going to be transparent so that we can continue to see the game screen behind it. So let's go ahead, we'll add a new file. Objective C class, and this will be our pause view controller. Again, we'll want to create the XIB file here, and then we'll hit next and create it in our project. All right, so once that's visible, we will make it so it's in landscape orientation. And we're going to change the color. We'll make this a light gray color, and I actually want to modify that, so I'll hit other. And then we'll bring the opacity down. That's this slider right here to 50%. With that, this view will be somewhat transparent. Now, what we'll need to do again is uh, actually create how this is going to look. So let's go ahead and we're going to need three buttons. So we're going to drag a button out. Let's customize it. This will be our play button. So when you pause the game, you want to start it up again. So we'll have a play button. It's going to have a background, which is going to be our one button graphic. I'll just throw that in here. And then we want to make this 140 pixels long and 40 pixels tall, just so that it feels nice with the current asset that I have. Now I can duplicate this by holding the option key and clicking and dragging. So I'm left clicking and dragging, or you can do, uh, if I delete that with a delete key, I can do a control or a command C and then command V and that will paste a copy. So with that, we have our play button up top. We'll have a store button right here. And then we will have our menu button down here. Now what I want to do is I want to just center everything. So there's the center and we're going to do the auto layout. So again, we'll start with the top button and work our way down. We need to describe the, actually we'll select all the buttons to start. We need to describe both the width and the height. So if we select this little pin menu here, I think that's where they call it. We can just set the width and the height. If we do those check boxes, then we say add constraints. It'll set that up for us. The next thing we want to do is center this. So I'm going to just drag up and do center horizontally in container. And then I kind of want it, I guess, centered vertically. So I'm going to drag to the right and say center vertically in container. Now, if I double click on this, you'll notice that it has an offset. So it's not in the center, but it's it's offset by 48 pixels. And so that information is capturing where it should appear. And what we can do is we can do a relative placement with everything else. So I can do vertical spacing. And if I hold the shift key, I can also select center X. So that's going to center that attribute. And so we see blue here and we see orange down here. So orange means it's not set up. So we'll do the same thing. I'll drag down with the right mouse button, and then I'll select both vertical spacing and center X by holding the shift key. With that, we've now described the layout rules for how this view is going to look, and we're almost ready to show it. All right, so now in the view controller class, just to see if things are working, let's go ahead and import our new code file. So this is going to be our pause view controller. With that, we will create a new instance variable. And then we need to initialize it. And you can pause the video at any time so that you can catch up with the code. And you can see I mixed that up. This should be the pause view controller. So don't just type blindly. You can see sometimes there's a, a warning that says something's wrong and hey, Paul, check out what you're typing. And we hit the play button here. When we hit the pause button, which we have a method down here in the game view controller, this is when we want to display our pause screen. So what we're going to do here is say self show view controller and then pause view controller. So we're actually going to layer our view controller. So we currently have the game view controller and on top of it, we'll layer this pause view controller. And you can do this stuff right on top of Sprite Kit or Cocos 2D. 
So let's let's do the moment of truth, see if this does show up. We'll hit play, pause, and we have a new screen that appears. So these buttons don't do anything. We still see the pause button. It's not clickable because we are, we're covering it up. We'll wanna hide that and we'll wanna also make these things work. So let's go ahead and, and start stubbing out how these buttons will work. Um, first, we're gonna need another delegate protocol. So again, we'll, we'll do the convention, which is the pause view controller delegate as the name. And then in the methods, we're gonna have three different methods to start. So we're gonna have void, pause, view, controller, and then did press play, did press uh, store, and did press menu. And we'll just pass a copy of the, the object. So that's the pause, view, controller, pause, view, controller. And to try and speed things up, I'll just copy and paste, and you can do the same thing. We'll just paste it three times. Now we're gonna have warnings and errors because it's it's the same thing. All we need to do here is change it to did press store, and then down here we'll do menu. So that should clear up our issues if we rebuild, and then it's saying, oh, well, I don't have the type. Remember, we have to do a forward declaration, so we do class and then pause view controller. And the reason we have to do this is because it's not defined until down here, but we're trying to use it right here. And so Xcode doesn't know anything about it. And by doing a forward declaration, we can let them know, hey, here's a heads up. We've got this class coming. It's not ready yet, but just get ready for it. All right, so with that, we then move on to creating our actual delegate object. So we'll create a property here that's gonna be accessible outside of this class. Again, we'll use weak because we don't want ownership of this object. We just want to refer to it. And here we make sure we conform to our new delegate that we just made, and we just call it delegate. With that, we need to hook up some buttons. So I'm gonna get rid of the did receive memory warning in the .m file. So we're now in pause view controller .m. And we are going to click on our XIB file. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold option and I'm going to click on pause view controller. So right over here, if I click on the XIB file, and that was the wrong key, so sorry. Um, click like that. It makes it pop up right here. I believe if I click, if I'm holding Option and I hold Shift and I click, I can choose where it goes, which is kind of handy if you want to control where it's going to go. And so if I just click that and click off, I think it just goes there. All right, so that is that. And now we want to connect the actions from these buttons. So let's just drag that in. I'm gonna insert it into the implementation block. So we're underneath view did load, and here's our play button pressed. And we'll scroll down and do our store button. And scroll down again, and then do our menu button. And you can see that since I'm putting it in the implementation block at the very bottom, it's always giving me the action connection. So I don't mix up the things. And I find this helpful when I'm doing a bunch of buttons like this, especially for a new interface. And I just wanna get things working. All right, so let's switch back to single view. And in our play button, we're just gonna invoke our delegate method. So these delegate protocol methods are gonna be required. The other class needs to conform to the interface and needs to implement them or it will crash. And we want this because we want all these options to be used in the game. It's not like a hypothetical situation. These are gonna be buttons that are gonna be pressing and we're gonna be changing screens. So we use our convention where we just type um, pause, view controller, and then we look for the correct one. So we have a play button and we pass our self. This is just the, the convention we use for delegate protocols. And we'll do the same thing, delegate, pause. We start with the autocomplete and we see that we have the store button. So we select that and pass in self. And self.delegate, pause view controller, did press store button. And I did the wrong one. This is the menu button. So make sure that they match. And we pass in self. 
And I'm just going to rearrange these. I'm just going to move the menu button up because that's how we... Actually, no, that's that's not how we have it. Okay, so this does match how the interface looks. So with that, let's stop and rerun and see if anything happens. Of course, nothing's going to happen yet. We now need to go back to our view controller class. So click on viewcontroller.m, go to the top, and we're going to say that we conform to this new delegate protocol. So we'll say pause view controller delegate. You'll basically want to do this every time you create a new class. So we'll put that at the top. And then down here, we need to set the delegate. And I'll show you what happens if we don't implement the methods. So we're saying, okay, I'm going to conform to those methods and all three of them. Now, I haven't actually written them. We'll see a warning here. And if I hit build, we should see that we have three warnings. And these are the, the methods that we haven't completed. But let's go ahead and, and, and say, no, Xcode, I know what I'm doing. And we do that. We hit play. We hit pause. And now we hit play. And boom, it crashes. So this is what happens if you don't conform to a method. Now we'll play detective. In case you, you were caught off guard, we're going to look at our output window down here. So you want to use this tab. And we scroll to the top and we see unrecognized selector sent to instance. And that's the name of it. And it's because we didn't implement it. So it tells us what object. So view controller is not implementing this thing. So we just go to view controller and we're like, oh, I forgot a couple methods. I've got a warning about it, which we'll see right here. And then we can just go ahead and add them. Now we're going to do that same syntax. So I'm going to hide this bottom bar. And we're going to do the same type of thing we did with the pragma mark. Now, I didn't show you what it does yet, but we'll show this up. And you can see that a pragma mark added this nice little thing here. So let's do another one so that we can sort of just section off where everything is. So we'll do mark dash. And this creates that nice little line. So this is going to be the pause view controller delegate. And then we'll just start adding them. If we start typing pause, it will give us the suggestions. So you don't even have to press escape, but if you do press escape, that will make this show in hide. So the first one we have is our play button. So let's add that. And in here, we'll just print out play to start. Just gonna stub these out first and then we'll add the, the real logic. Okay, so I'll just hit pause. And the next one we have is our store. Okay, so that's our store. And then the last one we do dash and then we start typing pause and we want our menu. So now we want to test this out. We go play, we hit pause, and now we have the, the way to resume, which is the play button. So you can see that it's printing out here. We have the store button and we have the menu button. So everything's hooked up. That's good. We don't have any gameplay yet. We're not at that point, but we're getting close. So when we hit the play button, what we want to do is we want to remove the pause screen. So what we can do here is we can just say self hide view controller and then pause view controller. And I'm just going to use the instance variable here. I could use the one that's passed in. Both will work. We don't have the store screen yet and we do have the menu screen. So that is our, our, our initial one. So what we need to do here is hide the view controller. We get the pause view controller. And then after that one, we need to hide the, the game view controller. So let's test this out. I'll stop and rerun. Play, pause, play. That makes that go away. So we hit pause. It comes back. That's good. We hit store. Nothing's happening yet. We hit menu and both go away. So that's kind of cool. All right, so that is how we can set up our pause menu. The next one that we're going to look at is getting some gameplay, and then we'll check out the store screen.